On episode 11 of This Week in Video Games, we have the top five single player games of all time, plus another edition of bonus points, and coming up right now, a showdown. Everybody, <laughs> my name is Michael Ludden, and this is this week in video games number eleven. Now we can start going like yeah, this. Yeah, double digits. One, two, three, four, five. I am here as usual with my always effervescent. That's host, a good word. We hostess. can continue on yeah, with that yeah. word. <laughs> Andrea, hello. Hi, how's it going? It's interesting because I, I would I just did a, a cameo on this week in iPads. So. I know, I saw. Yeah, it that was, was kind fun. of a big deal. So if you haven't seen that, go back and watch it. What yeah. did you do? You showed off some games, right? We talked about some, of course. That's what I love. You know, that's mm -hmm. what you love. We talked about a couple of iPad games. The iPad has fun. games. That's the iPad that has lots of cool I'm just games. I'm just, really? Do tell. Tell us about that. Well, Angry Birds. <laughs> Whatever. I'm going to show you Angry Birds on my phone. Don't steal my thunder. I'm not going to. Okay. I'm proud. <laughs> Too late. Sorry. Too late. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to do a showdown right off the bat today. Andrea and I are going to go head to head yet again, and we're going to see what happens today. I feel like my luck may just have run out. We don't know what we're playing, so let's get this started. Well, I've just kind of decided that, um, uh, oh, oh, yes. I've never played this because I don't own an eye product. Sweet. I didn't know there was a versus in this. Oh, my God. I'm so excited now. I love tower defense, though. <laughs> we talked about a tower Wait, defense we're game on the Is this, this going to take a long time? It's tower defense. Aren't there rounds? I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll try. I'm the zombies? Wait. I am the plants. Okay. I'm the plants, and Andrea's going to be the zombies. The zombie is, of course, eating the Xbox 360 controller. Quick play, here we go. Oh, Lord. Man, I've never I don't done know this what I'm play. doing. I don't. <laughs> I've never played this game before. Oh, um. Okay, I know what I'm doing. I, I don't really understand what I'm doing. Do I have to stay behind the lines? What's going on? I'm getting things, I'm getting little sunshine things. This, playing this game is to make me seem ignorant, isn't it? No, this guy needs to be di dead. This is what he needs to be done, have done to. What? R R one. Okay, go. Ah! Kill him. <laughs> hey, hey, that's not I'm cool. I'm coming How do for I you. Wait, don't the sunflowers do something? What do they do? They make you collect sun. You have to use the um the right and left buttons to um. Thank you for the late tutorial. Oh whatever. You crucified me on Halo, and I didn't know what I was doing. Because that's a skill-based game. Oh no, I'm kidding. This I'm kidding. is a skill-based right. game. You're right. I just. I thought the plant. I thought the flowers did something. What? This is so lame. Can they only shoot in their own thing? I. Oh, no. oh are they just to, they're just a block, right? The flowers are just a block. The fl some flowers give you sun, which lets you buy things. Oh, thank you. Okay, so now I need to put another sunflower here, maybe. Although that's the wrong place. Yeah, okay. football player. Oh yeah, congrats on the Vikings. Oh, don't tell me. I'm not going to tell you what's happening. I don't want to know. My I'm Vikings are playing it. right now, and Can I'm Can I just tell you it. what happened in the first quarter? No, don't tell How me. How about the first five minutes? No. Did we get a touchdown? Ah, I need the, I need the, I need to go, actually. What? What is that? Why is there a football player? This game's weird. <laughs> that oh. I ate your brains. Is that the game? <laughs> what? what just happened? <laughs> All right. The, the, what happened was, remember, what? remember when you beat me five to nothing? Hey, That's remember when I've never played that game? Have I you, never played you never... the multiplayer Halo. No, did you ever play that Plants vs. Zombies? Not for Xbox, I played it on the iPad. To see, I, mm, I didn't even know there whatever. was a multiplayer version. Whatever, I never played Plants vs. Zombies. <laughs> thank you, thank you, yes, finally I won something. <laughs> Pick a game she knows and I don't. Look yeah. at it matches your beautiful Ninja Turtle shirt. Go Ninja Turtles, they're see? awesome. It's awesome. Wow, I'm not happy all of a sudden. <laughs> it's okay. But your first story makes me happy. Oh yeah, well yeah. we're talking about what we're playing on first, aren't we? Oh yeah, right, yeah, right. So, what okay. have you been playing lately? I'm playing Splinter Cell Conviction. And <laughs> Limbo. But first, Splinter Cell Conviction. Uh, I like it a lot. I didn't think I would because I didn't like the other Splinter Cells. Um, the other Splinter Cells were not so fun because 
They were a little clunky in their controls. And this one is a lot like, what does it remind me of? It reminds me of, um, it reminds me of, honestly, uh, Mass Effect, because I played Mass Effect first, Mass Effect 2, where you can kind of like, you earn points in this, and you're able to do a bunch of like, auto kill headshots if you, you know, are, are tactful enough beforehand. <laughs> It looks hot. Come on, just roll, roll with it. Oh my. Uh, <laughs> so, it's a lot of fun so far. You're just enjoying this way too much. It's time. It's okay. Get it all out. Thank you. Get it all out. Thank you. Because the next, the next game that we both are on equal playing field for, I'm coming back. Yes. Coming back. Yes. Uh, the other game I'm playing is Limbo. And just watch this beginning clip. Just watch it. That's it. That's you know, the game. I, I tried Limbo, and I, th actually, I thought it was really kind of creepy. Yeah, creepy, definitely, yeah. like the bear, the bear claw. Yeah, not that cool. Get you. Not cool, and like the Ugh. black blood flying everywhere. And the like the giant spiders and things like that. It's a creepy game, but I like it. It got five out of five on IGN, and so I decided to pull the trigger. And it's a really cool release for summer, you know, on yeah. XBLA. Yeah. If you're looking to play something, you don't want to invest 60, 70 bucks. Like I really want to try Tomb Raider. I heard that got really fantastic reviews too. It did it? Did yeah. Yes, so, well, I'm not playing either of those games right now. I did try Limbo, as I said. Right now, I'm playing Pixel Junk's Shooter. Now, this is kind of um, uh, a montage of just some of the game shots. This is, Pixel Junk is probably one of my favorite game developers. Mm. This is, um, they actually have the Shooter 2 coming out, I believe, next month. Basically, what you are is you're underground in this alien world, and you have this little ship and you shoot the rocks, and there's a really good play on liquids. You got water and lava, and what you have to do is you have to go around and pick up these little miners and rescue them. And then, of course, you do have some big bosses, like you see here, some mini bosses. And it, it's just kind of a fun little game. It's actually more challenging than you would think it is um, because of all the different plays on, on um, uh, heat and uh, ice. That are in the game, like if your ship over, like there, if your ship overheats, you like crash and die, and you can pick up these flowers to change the lava into rock, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's very stylish. It does that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's kind of a really fun game. I just got Ruse. We just picked that up. Whoa! It's a strategy game, action strategy game, which I'm really excited to try. So, so excited. but sitting at home yeah. on the. TV stand waiting for me to play it. So, but Pixel Junk Shooter, that's what I've been playing. I just got Paranormal Activity on Netflix. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I've never seen that movie. It's not really a game. No? But uh, I got it. I'm sorry, I'm being weird. <laughs> that's okay, <laughs> totally okay. Because right now we are going to move on to the video game news segment of our show. Now, this first story, I was really excited. I don't know if you uh, were oh, excited so when excited. you heard are about you it. Are kidding me? But it has been announced. It's official. Duke Nukem Forever is happening, mm -hmm, people. Mm -hmm. That's right. Here oh, is the trailer. <laughs> um, at PAX Prime over the weekend, Gearbox has announced that they have acquired the Duke Nukem IP. They um, on, they were on hand to discuss. The CEO, Randy Pitchford, made the announcement along with a lot of other creative heads of the game. Th when it was at 3D Realms, the kind of stalled in development for many years. Mm -hmm. It was We had it on one of our top five biggest flops. I had it on my top five biggest flops because it never came out. And now they're just going to completely ruin my top five biggest flops well, of the decade. I, well, now you'll have to figure out something else. You know, of all time, I think it was. Yeah, so it's kind of cool because this game has been in development for quite some time. So yeah. it's in the polish phase right now. They did have a demo available to play on the show floor at PAX Prime. Yeah, I saw impressions of the game, and you know what? It looks like it's going to be a good game. I mean, there's no way it would ever live up to the hype, but I love it because it opens with him at a urinal, and you press, like, a button for him to pee, and then he gets out of the urinal, and he spouts, like, one-liners left and right. It's amazing. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to the game. Yeah, typical Duke Nukem crass yeah. <laughs> humor. So um, 2K Games hasn't really said when they're going to release the demo version, but a demo version is going to be coming before the retail release, which is going to be in 2011. Mm. So it is a little ways off. They have to put some finishing touches. Gearbox is going to do their whole, you know, overhaul on, on it. But Duke Nukem Forever, it's happening. Get That's excited. Exciting. Also exciting, maybe just for me. I prefer the look of the hat like this. It's good. I look like I'm a baby. I just need a, a pacifier. pacifier thing. It's been a while since I was a baby. Um, fi Final Dragon Age Origins downloadable content is released. It is released, and it's called Witch Hunt. Um, if anybody played the original 
Origins, uh, Dragon Age Origins, you know that there was a character called Morrigan who was a witch in your party. And yes, you could choose to be romantically involved in her, uh, or you could choose to be like enemy, frenemies with her, um, and eventually she would leave your party. But uh, there, are, she was one of the central characters of the of the main side story, and she was the most interesting character by far in your party. And in this final DLC, you get to see, you know, what her fate is, as that says. But apparently, I just read a review of it, uh, a few reviews actually, and they all say it sucks. They say it's like really short. Like they use literally recycled areas from the expansion, which I played through the Awakenings. Um, and it doesn't, it's really kind of story light, so it's a bit of a tease. It doesn't, because at the end of the game, she goes, uh, it's after the game, she goes away. I'm not going to tell anybody anything specific in case you want to beat the game. For whatever reason, at least with my character, she did. And it's very mysterious. It's very unresolved. You don't know why, why she did that. You're just trying not to laugh, right? You're just trying not to laugh. Uh, it, it's a kind of funny. I'm trying to focus on what you're saying. No, that's good. <laughs> really? Down here. Eyes down here, okay? <laughs> I'm not a thing. Uh, Welcome to my life. Yeah, right? Jeez. <laughs> so, um, maybe for different reasons, yes, though. Yes, <laughs> indeed, indeed. People don't just try to laugh at you. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get it. Because it's like seven bucks, and it just released, and it's the final DLC for Dragon Age Origins. I played the other. I'm think? just really happy that you said the most interesting character was a female one. She was. And you should play through the game because she's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, she is. Okay, well, I'll have to uh, check it out. Seven bucks. I can't pass that up, right? Well, I mean, apparently you can. If you're not a fan of the original game, I wouldn't get it. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody unless you're like a hardcore Dragon Age lore fan. I got into the lore. Like, I was reading the tomes in the, in the thing, you know? Oh, really? Yes, I was. I was. Well, I mean... That's the kind of game you are, though, really, right? It yeah. is, kind of. Uh, but I'm the kind of person that reads the whole instruction manual before I start playing a game. I don't even know that games still come with instruction manuals, <laughs> really. A lot of them don't, really. <laughs> I mean, yeah. most of it's just like, here are the analog sticks, here are the buttons, mm. good luck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, moving on, our next story, you guys. Red 5 Studios announces its new shooter, Firefall. We have some footage that we're going to play for you right here. At PAX Prime, Red 5 Studios announced this new shooter. It's a team-based, created by Mark Kern, who led the development of World of Warcraft on Blizzard. Plus, we also got Scott Youngblood, the former lead designer of Tribes. Now, it's not described as an MMO, but it does say in the press release that it will bring hundreds of players together in a dynamic, open-world, combined, intense, competitive, multiplayer, and large-scale cooperative gameplay. So that sounds like an MMO to me even though they just didn't come out right and say it. <laughs> the game is set on the devastated Earth 200 years in the future and has survivors battling against a race called the Chosen, which hmm. are trying to destroy humanity. The game's twist on the team-based shooters is the use of battle frames items that players can equip and then customize to make their character into a class that suits their play style. You know what honestly looks like Borderlands? A it does like kind of look like Borderlands. First, uh, what's it called, a uh, role-playing shooter? Maybe maybe with a little more action bent this time. You know, this is this looks a little more um, less apocalyptic than Border Borderlands mm. looks a little more apocalyptic to me. Mm. Um, they say it's going to be a free to play microtransaction model for Firefall. Maybe you can just call it a demo so that you can experience <laughs> every detail of the vibrant world without having to pay a penny. That's kind of nice. This is going to be released near the end of 2011, so we're talking about a year away from now. But they are currently accepting beta applications at the game's official website now. So if you guys are interested in playing, which will, I'm guessing will be another amazing game from Blizzard, because Blizzard knows how to make awesome games. Yeah, they do. So, they make, know how to yeah, make great games. That's it. Firefall. Yes. Check it out. What's the next story on our list? I'm missing a page. Enslaved, Odyssey to the West. Oh, I'm so excited about that. That's Take what I was calling page. for. Yeah, thank you. That's thank you. That's what friends are for. <laughs> oh, that's why we're a team. <laughs> exactly. And I have to wear the hat. You help me out. I do like it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I just basically want to show you. This This was uh, released this weekend over PAX. The opening to Enslaved, Odyssey to the West. It's going to be awesome. So check it out.
Prisoner loose in here. Affirmative, Slave 949. Combat mech activating. Slaves report to escape pods. Slaves escape pods. Now you're talking. Come on. Yes, he beats things up. It looks really sweet. Uh, somebody in the chat room, Miguel, and on our production team, Kenny, said that it looks a little bit like Uncharted 2 at the beginning. And it's true. If you mean it looks awesome and cinematic, you're right. <laughs> it's going to be a contender for Game of the Year. Some people are already like, Game of the Year on the blogs and stuff. Like Game of 2010? Yeah, I mean... Really? Game of the Year contender? That's, that's a gauntlet they just threw down. Yeah, yeah. You don't think Halo's just gonna wipe everyone up with 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 those kind of rewards? They're gonna wipe them up. <laughs> Tell you what, <laughs> Halo's just gonna wipe everybody up. I'm really excited for Halo. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so distracted by the hat today. I love. It. I'm trying to make it work for it's me. Can you kind of have this like French painter thing going? Oh, I would paint you a picture. <laughs> yeah. It's good to see you. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. I like it. Good times. All right, our next story, you guys, this is another PAX Prime announcement from over the weekend. There was a really cool Infamous 2 preview, and we have some footage from a behind-closed-doors demo. What? That, of course, is online, because, like, everything gets leaked mm -hmm, online. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's still online. Actually, I haven't checked, but we have it. So we're going to go ahead and roll some of this footage right now so you guys can take a peek. This is a PlayStation 3 exclusive action yeah. role-playing game. It's kind of cool, you know, we get our character back, Cole, who can throw lightning. Now, a lot of people are saying that this is a huge Force Unleashed 2 comparison. It's kind of an inevitable comparison. Um, but um, Lightning user Cole gets a, a new set of powers, one which we saw looked like a Force Throw, which is kind of cool, which you'll see later on here in this footage. Wow. Which looks pretty sweet, may I add. It, it, they're right. It does look a lot like Force Unleashed. The first one's nothing like Force Unleashed, though. That's, that's weird. It's an open world game. It's not, it's not at all like Force Unleashed. But this does look like it a lot. You're right. Yeah, so, I mean, so there are some similarities that can be drawn. But the setting offers more than just the city to play with. The hands-off demo showed that there, it takes place in a swamp location. Kind of looks like a bayou outside of Louisiana. Yeah. Um, there's a New Orleans-style city nearby for when you want to scale skyscrapers and fun stuff like that. Do you have to run from like a flood coming at you? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. The levee's broke. 
The developer wanted to improve traveling so it would be more fun to get around the city. A second level demoed on the pack's show floor to fans showed off how Cole, the lead character, could track and run down a car during a chase mission. But I couldn't find any footage of this myself. The developer was not willing to reveal anything about the story. Of course, they like to keep everything under wraps, including additional playable characters, number of victims, non-playable characters, all that good stuff. We don't know. It's all just speculation at this point, unfortunately. But from what I saw, I mean, that looks pretty cool. Being able to throw lightning. And the first one was a winner, and uh, this one will be too, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it should be a good, should be a good game. They are in the pre-alpha stage of development right now, and there is a release date fixed sometime in 2011, but we're not sure which quarter it will be in, but it'll be sometime next year when this game comes out. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah? That's all, that's all I got. Okay. Yes. Cool. What else? The other thing I'm looking forward to at this juncture is the following thing. This. Bioshock 2. No, Bioshock 3. Bioshock Infinite. Wow. Bioshock Infinite. Take you got a look so at the, excited. <laughs> you take a look at the screenshot. It's more of a website, but take a look at it. It's got uh, a screenshot of Bioshock on it. Um, we're gonna get that up in just a second. It's got a screenshot of um, uh, this crazy guy that looks kind of like a big daddy, but he's not a big daddy. I think Bioshock is an exercise in something we really haven't seen in games. It's like a game that's made to be similar to another game, but with no relation to that game. It's the same team, and they're trying to be similar without being the same, but there's no actual relation. So anyway, there's a, a clip on, uh, what's, the, what's the website we have Destructoid. there? Destructoid. On destructoid.com. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, definitely check it out. It's got this crazy guy. He's got like a, a pull-up mustache, and he's like 12 feet tall, and he's got like wooden arms. He's not wearing a helmet like a big daddy, but he's like a big daddy. It's really weird, and he's like swiping at the main character, and you're out on this... Um, I'm just gonna keep describing the scene until we find it. So <laughs> where you're out on this like cobblestone street, and it winds and winds, and, and uh, it's all blue sky. So it's the complete opposite in terms of that. It's not these dark corridors underwater. There's like blue sky. It almost looks like a happy scene. It's really bizarre uh, the way it looks. Um, and yeah. I think that that's gonna be to me something that's gonna be more appealing about the new Bioshock is that it isn't so because there's so many games that you're like in these hallways yeah. and it's dark and scary and I think that that's really kind of innovative of the Bioshock developing team to kind of say well, listen we're not gonna setting. go under we're gonna take everything up in the sky totally. and I think that it's gonna add a really cool dynamic to the game totally and and it's not gonna be in the trailer if you guys are looking for it it's actually gonna be in uh, there's a story they ran with just one crazy screenshot of this guy swiping down. Uh, if you want to look it up yourself. Yep. Sorry we couldn't get that website up for you guys. We will uh, be sure to post but, yeah, that website totally. in the blog notes. But it, it, it's interesting because it brings up, like I've never seen another franchise do this where it's a sequel. You know what? Final Fantasy kind of does it a little bit. They do it a little bit. They keep their their do enemies what? the same. Oh, you but mean But they're keep different the characters the same. stories and they're different worlds just about each time. I know there are a couple of sequels in there, here and there, but it, it's interesting, I, I, besides Final Fantasy, and their main characters are totally different, I don't know of a franchise that's trying to look similar, but be different with the same succession, I, I don't know, it's weird to me, is what I'm saying. <laughs> do you think what it's kind of like Mario, where it's like the same characters, but different, well, it's really the same but story But it's still Mario, time. you know, yeah. still, they would still be big daddies, but this guy has nothing at all to, to do with being a big daddy, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. It'll be uh, um, exciting to see what other kinds of screenshots and footage they release through the development of the game. Darn it. I'm not going to get to take off the hat before we do our top five. Well, you're close. You're five I'm minutes very in. Close. Yeah. We got yeah. five more minutes to go, and then you can take the hat off. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> okay. Andrea. I appreciate that. Now it is time for Michael and I's collaborative mm -hmm. effort on the top five single player games of all time. Ooh. Oh, I like that. I like that. It's so, kind of soothing. Hmm. I thought they were going to play like one is the loneliest number or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That would be a good one too. Yes. So I have the one in now I have to first off say I know that we're going to get a lot of people out there that are going to disagree with us mm -hmm. and that's totally okay. Mm -hmm. Please send us your thoughts and comments on our Facebook page. You can post comments. You can email us at videogames at thisweekend.com. You can hit us up on Twitter at TWI uh, Video, video Games. games. <laughs> That's a mouthful. You usually say that one. I know. <laughs> took me some practice. <laughs> so, but here in, in at number five, I've got Fallout 3. 
That's right. You know the game. You love it. It was got a slew of awards, you guys. We had a best of E3, best RPG, game of the year, best writing, best of Xbox 360. It's got a game ranking score of 93%. It is owned and developed by Bethesda Softworks, who makes fantastic games. I love Bethesda. It's set in post-apocalyptic, retro-futuristic Washington, D.C. It's a huge, huge game. I can't even, like... Describe, if you guys have not played this game, you need to pick it up. I believe there's a Game of the Year edition, totally. which is awesome because you get all, all of the, the expansion DLC. packs mm -hmm. all in one disc for the same price as the original title came mm -hmm. out. So if you haven't had a chance to play this, it's... I just really... What's cool about this game is that it really combines action strategy, first-person shooter, and a little bit of survival horror. Yeah. You know, which is one of the reasons why I really love this so game. So, it, it, I love this game. I beat this game and I bought a bunch of the DLC. Like, it was so addictive because it took the formula that was so successful with Oblivion with the incessant loot collecting. You can go into a room and collect loot for like 20 minutes and then you work on like getting your character under his max and upgrading your character and selling stuff and all that kind of RPG goodness with uh, first-person shooters, and you can literally just play it like a first-person shooter with upgrading your guy. Um, or you can use the mechanism, the, the Pip-Boy mechanism, where you can zoom in on a specific part of the guy, and that's what I ended up doing, because I had a bunch of special powers that you couldn't use in real time. You had to, you know, like, zero people out and try to get the headshot, because I worked on that a lot. Um, this game's amazing. I love it. I, I think, uh, I think it's, it's worthy of, you know, being included in maybe a longer list. Mm -hmm. of, of this stuff and we're gonna try not to disagree because we, we did collaborate on this but Andrea and I kind of kind of came up with a solution where we would each put a game that we thought belonged on the list I think this is a fantastic game I'm just gonna go straight to number four without saying that this is my number four uh, on this list of all time Resident Evil 4 I I love this game it stands the test of time even uh, this is from the final boss um, the game is so freaking engrossing. The way it keeps layering on challenges and getting more and more difficult at just the right time. It's, such, it's one of the most perfectly balanced, fun, and scary games. It'll give you thrills and chills. There's even some comedy in it, although it's usually kind of off-kilter <laughs> comedy. Black comedy, if you will. Yeah, it's like, it's like the kind of Japanese comedy you get in some of the Final Fantasy games where you're like, is that, I don't know if that's supposed to be funny, you know, where they like fall down randomly and stuff. Yeah, it's not mm -hmm. that kind of comedy in Resident Evil 4, but you know, it's something like that. But uh, it, it's a, it's an amazing, amazing experience, and it's long. It's super long. There's tons of replay value. You collect different things. I still remember the guy's voice, who's like, he's like, got anything to sell? <laughs> you know that guy, though, the shady stranger. He follows you around in the game with literally a trench coat, and he opens it like this. He's like. What you buying? <laughs> he opens it up. It's so creepy. The game, ah, it's amazing. The story's ridiculous, but it's still a lot of fun to watch. And it takes you on a journey through this crazy town to, you know, mysteries in this mansion, to an island, all sorts of different locations. Final Fantasy, uh, Final Fantasy, Resident Evil 5 um, is, is, tries to mimic it, and it's much better graphics, but it's way more action-oriented. And I think the OG Resident Evil 4 deserves the nod because it was the first of its kind, and it was really just an amazing play. No, agreed. You know, I, I wish I could argue with you here, but I'm not going to. Okay, all right. Because we're not arguing. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. <laughs> all right, moving on to number three on our list. That's right, he talked about it earlier. It's Oblivion, full name Elder Scrolls, for commonly referred to as Oblivion. Now, this is um, the fourth, of obviously, in a series of games by Bethesda. PC Gamer rated it number one in their top 100 video games of all time. They also received a Platinum Award and a number of other awards. What was really cool about this version of the game over some of its predecessors, it had, at the time, it had a really cool improved um, artificial intelligence over the previous editions. It had more meaningful quests, more realistic characters, better settings. Obviously, the graphics, so it had a huge open world that you could explore. I mean, you could literally just get detracted from your mission and just go running mm -hmm. around killing stuff. Totally. You know, which was, you know, kind of fun for me because sometimes when I get frustrated if I can't pass a certain aspect of the mission, yeah. I'm like, screw it, I'm just going to walk around. <laughs> I would frequently get in trouble playing this game because I would accidentally do something and everyone would start attacking me. Like, I would... I would loot the wrong thing where it was red instead of green, the oh, hand. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. I'd just take it, and then all of a sudden the guards would be after me. And then I'd be in like this crazy battle where I'm trying to kill every guard in the city, and then I run out of the city, I have to wait in the forest. So I didn't end up beating the game just because 
I got sidetracked so much, like I'd find a little cave where there are bandits, but it took me like two hours to get through. Yeah. And I didn't have the quest, so then I gotta go back and get the quest. But it, it was amazing when this game first came out, the detail of it. People mm -hmm. really, it's like just a place, right? It's an open world RPG, essentially. It's just one big place you could walk from end to end. And that's what's really cool about this game. Like yeah, it was it a out. cutting edge interface at the time for mm -hmm, Bethesda. Mm -hmm. They developed their own special kind of totally. software for this game that they now implement and mm -hmm. use in all of the games that they're creating now. Yeah. So it was it was really neat. And one of the things that was kind of cool about this game versus its predecessors is that there was no loading screens everywhere. Right, Instead, right. it just was like you can't walk here. You know, turn around. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I used to always try to test the bounds and like jump over the edge. Oh yeah. You couldn't. You couldn't jump over the edge. They, they were good natural barriers. It wasn't like you just stopped you. Right. You just literally couldn't. Like like there, the rocks were too high. But you could see out. There's another land over there. I always wanted to go to that land. Yeah. These games ignite my like expor exploration desire. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted to test the boundaries and like, well, maybe an expansion. They'll put something here. You know, and then right. But uh, they didn't do that. They just added more quests to the main. Oh no, there was there was an expansion. Where it took place in another alternate area. There was area. a couple expansions yeah, there were, for that. There were. Yeah. I actually remember I used to play it on PC and I would actually get the expansions through another means and test them out because it was so easy to do on the PC. Mm -hmm. You know, right. I'm not saying anything beyond that. Uh huh. It's just I uh, think alternate we, I think, means. I think I smell <clears throat> what you're stepping in. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's hey, good. Thanks. Um, number two, I kind of cheated. There are two games at number two because I played them around the same time and they both are connected with this fond memory. The first is Chrono Trigger. This game, I mean, this is the intro from the PlayStation version. Um, I couldn't find any suitable footage to throw up here from the OG uh, Chrono Trigger game, but just let's, let's crank up the music for a second because this is what's dear to my heart. Okay, actually, hold on one sec. Uh, we're actually gonna crank up the music in a second. It's when it really starts, not the little uh, wind up toy music, the stuff that comes after. If anybody's ever played Chrono Trigger, you know what I'm talking about. Um, this game was one of the first RPGs to have multiple endings, and you travel through time, you really go close to this cast of characters. Here you go, listen to this. That's the, that's the happy music that makes me happy every time I hear it. Because in Chrono Trigger, it's really cool. Like, you grow close to these cast of characters, and some of them get lost in time, depending on, on your, your decisions and whether or not you win a really tough battle. There's this crazy guy, uh, Lavos, who's destroying all of humanity. You gotta, you gotta go around time and, like, figure out. I, re I still remember this, this one time you appear in this city that's like this floating city, and it's got this really awesome music. You can't get off the city. It's just one time period. Oh gosh, I wish I could remember what it was called. But it just ignites this sense of wonder in me from when I was a kid playing these games. And you never knew which ending you were gonna get. I would read little uh, guides online to try to figure out which ending I was gonna get. Oh, it's uh, so much fun to play this game. Um, if anybody hasn't played it, it does stand the test of time. It's an amazing, amazing RPG. It's still to this day, it's just a ton of fun to play. The battle, the strategy, going, the story going through time, and um, then seeing what ending you're gonna get, seeing if you can actually challenge yourself and beat these, beat these fights. There are con tons of other little challenges where they're like time challenges. If you complete them in a certain time, you'll get a certain outcome. And in the beginning of the game, certain things you do matter because you go to jail for a crime you either did or didn't commit, and these guys, you're in this crazy courtroom. And this was like early 90s on the Super Nintendo that they did this. It's such an amazing game. It stands the test of time, Chrono Trigger. The other game of that time period that was similar and also by Square Enix was Final Fantasy III. So there it is. Obviously this wasn't in the original Super Nintendo, um, but it has an orchestrated version of the soundtrack, which is also, also brings back memories. This game was awesome because it was like the first, to me, the first really deep RPG that I played. I know that there was Final Fantasy 2 and 1, which they've now renamed and confused everybody Final Fantasy 2 and 4 because that was their name in Japan because there were three other Final Fantasy games. But to me this will always be Final Fantasy 3, even though they re-released it as Final Fantasy 6. Um, the game 
you, you, the, it's really cool all the different things you can do, all the different classes you can be, all the different places you can go. Um, and it too has two different endings, I think. Uh, I think I remember that correctly. But halfway through the game, like you go through this world and you conquer this overworld, you get an airship, and then halfway through the game, there's this uh, apocalyptic event that happens and everything changes. You're suddenly, you have no idea where you are and everything's way different. It's, it, I remember playing this, this along with, with Chrono Trigger and these are some of my fondest memories still. So yeah, it's a little bit of, of a nerdgasm that I'm having to put this at number two, but those two games, they just bring back so many memories. It's okay, you're allowed to have your nerdgasm here on this week in video games. I guess so. If, it's an if not here, place. then where? Exactly. You know? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So that brings us to our da -da -da -da, number one single player game of all time. All and, time. And Michael and I pretty much agreed unanimously. Yes. Unanimously. I got you. I got you. I got you. On this. That's right. Let's it's the one, the only Super, Super Mario Brothers. Brothers. Hey, we got clap too. Thank you. You guys know this game. You love this game. Uh, I spent hours, yeah. light days, <laughs> years playing this game. Yes. This, the, I got to tell you, this was the first game I ever played, period. Um, my grandpa, my parents didn't want me to have a video game system, right? So when I was a little kid, uh, my grandpa came over one birthday and brought it. And my parents were like, what? And I was lost forever. Thanks to the Nintendo Entertainment System yeah. and my Super Mario Brothers video game. I was lost to video games for life. This is what got me started on video games. Yeah, I remember playing this in, in the basement at my dad's house yeah. and just like being down there in the dark for like hours until he would be like, all right, it's time to eat. And then yeah. you'd go yeah. upstairs and eat and you'd go right back down and just play. The, the thumb blisters. Oh, yeah, Do you remember, remember those? Yeah. <laughs> on the controller from having yeah. to race through and jump, oh, super jump. It's such a sharp controller compared to today's like ergonomic controllers. You I know? know. It's crazy when you look back and you hold it in your hand. So before we get a bunch of hate mail, I agree that Super Mario Brothers 3 was better. I agree that Super Mario World was better. I agree that new Super Mario Brothers was better. That but Super it's, Mario it's Galaxy not, is pretty awesome. Super Mario Galaxy is amazing. But this is about like the game's that for all time stand the test of time and are still great and were pioneers of their time. And that's this game. I mean, Mario Brothers, it started it all. Right. right? Well, that, well, something that I think is overlooked in this game is how difficult this game actually is. Yeah. Like, when you go back and play this this version of the game, mm -hmm. it's you forget how easy it is to die. It's totally. like you get hit once, <laughs> you're dead. You fall in once, you're dead. Absolutely. You know, so it's it's not like it's one of those games where you can take a lot of hits and you can keep going. It's like you really need to be careful, you really need to strategize and I think that yep. there's some people that know really cool tricks in this game. Like the footage that you guys saw is actually from a YouTube video that I found of a guy passing the entire game in five minutes and not getting hit one what? time. Yeah, I've seen videos like that from Mario 3 and stuff, but not Mario 1. Yeah, it That's was tough. it was pretty wow. sweet. I mean, some not people online are like, oh, time. it was fake, it was hacked. I mean, you can easily it, hack that stuff. It's you know, true. and I was like, well, it it takes time and skill to learn all the glitches, you know what I mean? Like how he jumped over the um, the plants that come up mm -hmm, out of the tubes, because mm -hmm. the tops of the plants, you could actually like touch them and you wouldn't die. Yes, you could. You just you run could. to the sides is when you die. Yeah, Super Mario Brothers, you win. And and you're still, they're still rock. he's still rocking, that little plumber. Uh, it's been, um, what is it now, 20 years? That they've been doing this? My, Mario has been around 20 years. My, how the time has passed. He's probably like the oldest video game character ever. Maybe Pac-Man. Yeah, that, that would be Pong if Pong were a character, right? Yes. Pong would have to be the oldest video game probably. character. Probably. <laughs> that should have made this list. Be like, number one, Pong, let's roll the clip. And it's just like, <laughs> 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 It's not really perfect. like a, a single player game, though. So... The next, so that's our top five games of all time. Yay! Let us top know what five. you guys thought. If you agreed, if we left, obviously mm -hmm. we know that we left some stuff off. Of I mean, this is an we, amalgamation of our two tastes, you know, and it's not going to yeah. be representative of, of yeah, the perfect top five list of all time. But it's ours. Yeah, our top that's five. Right. That's this week in video games top five list of all time. So send us your thoughts at videogames at thisweekin.com. So my next story was going to be about uh, Angry Birds on the Android platform, and it still kind of is. I'm trying to get it to work. There was a beta that was released. Um, it's still beta. It's Angry Birds Lite Beta, and it always played great on my phone, but some people had said that the game wouldn't start for them. Well, guess what? 
Now the game won't start on my phone. This is not wah, a ringing endorsement wah. on my Evo 4G, but it is the beta. Uh, and I'm going to restart and try to get it up as I talk about it. But in general, there have been a lot of iPhone and iPad games being ported to the 4.3-inch beauty. That is the Evo 4G. Mm -hmm. You can get this game, the first-person shooter Nova, which is amazing. You can get Assassin's Creed in full 3D, Asphalt 5. You can get all sorts of ridiculous games. There's this game called Dungeon Hunter, which is a lot of fun. It's a lot like Diablo. What else is coming out? Um, there are a lot of really good games coming out on Android. Oh, yeah, here's a screenshot of it on that. Yes, there it is. Uh, and uh, it's just like it is on the other platform. Have you played Angry Birds? I love Angry Birds. I actually did a review of Angry Birds um, on a previous, uh, on another uh, website called yeah. Dayfly that reviews apps for the iPad and the yeah. iPhone, which is kind of cool. I actually have played Angry Birds on the iPad. It's fun, right? And I have to say, I have it on my iPod Touch, right. which is great for when I'm like standing in line like and need to, need to, you know, screen. like pass some time, but on the iPad, it's yeah. really awesome. It's so really this cool. is the insert shot. We, we at least set up the insert shot. So I'll here, let me try to get my password up here. OK, so Will, he's going to show us. The, I'm going to show you. At least get the insert shot. We got a request to at least see the nice kickstand in action. So if we have that available, there it is. And that's the real moving galaxy in the background. It's not real, but it is a galaxy moving. Um, Angry Birds is. Right about there. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to show you Asphalt 5 because this game's awesome. <laughs> we already got the insert shot. This game's awesome. It's a lot of fun. Um, I'll just bring it up right here. Why not? Sure. So Gameloft releases, I don't, I don't know if everybody knows what Gameloft is. Gameloft is actually one of the biggest game publishers right now. It's crazy. They release a ton of game uh, games for the iOS platform, and now they're releasing a ton of games for the Android platform. They've really come on in a big way. People don't realize how big they are. They've gotten the license to Altair's Chronicles on Assassin's Creed. Um, I think they're going to mix, I mean, obviously, the, the Asphalt series, they didn't create that, but they have the rights to it. Um, I guess these big companies are like, yeah, you have them, and they're doing a great job, and they're selling a ton of, a ton of things on that. Okay, so this is Asphalt 5. It's pretty exciting. I'm going to try to not get the glare on it. The loading screen is especially exciting. How about you let that load while I talk about this cool Medal of Honor story? Yeah, but it just loaded. Oh, is it ready? There, look. You're ready to go? Yes, we're ready to go. There we go. So, uh, we're going to do a quick race. I'll just show you the games are awesome on a 4.3 inch screen. This is my Evo 4G, in case you don't know. I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Wow, there's another loading screen. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. Okay, okay. I'll tell you what. Why don't you go into your story right, and we'll come back to it. thank you. I'm itching to talk about this story. Thank you. Thank you, production team. Much All right. appreciated. Moving on, we got Medal of Honor. We talked about this story a couple weeks ago, you guys. It has officially been banned from Army and Air Force Base stores. No! The controversy that has been steadily brewing around the ability to play as the Taliban in the new Medal of Honor has gotten the upcoming shooter so banned bad. from military stores. Now, in these shots, as you can see here, you're playing as a Taliban shooter. Shooting American soldiers. That's this gameplay footage that you guys are watching right now. The Army and Air Force Exchange Service confirmed that no store located on an Army or Air Force base will be able to sell this reboot. That ban includes 49 game stops located across the continental U.S. and to all military bases worldwide. In an email sent out to employees, GameStop said that they will be pulling all marketing materials relating to the game from those stores. Customers wishing to reserve a copy of this Medal of Honor will have to go to a GameStop location off base. Now, GameStop is fully supporting AFI's in this endeavor because of this multiplayer mode that you can play the Taliban in. Now, I... We had talked about this previously, about our thoughts about it. Is it right? Is it not right? Is it just a game? When is it not just a game? And then when I saw this, I thought it was so disturbing to watch these American soldiers getting shot by these Taliban. I know it's a video game, but it's it's disturbing. Isn't? What do you think? Don't you think it's disturbing? Um, or what do you? Th I mean, maybe you don't. Maybe you're like, ah, it's just a game. You there's a winning team and a losing team. Well, I mean. If, if there were a skin of everybody being Hitler and everybody else being like an emaciated Jewish person, then that would be disturbing too. And this is a little disturbing. I think that when things touch certain subjects, it can be really wrong. You know, yeah. regardless of, oh, it's just a game. It's just, it's Hitler and, you know, Auschwitz prisoners. That's the game. You know, it's, it, it's the same kind of deal. I guess seeing it does affect me the same way. It's pretty weird to see, you know, stabbing an American soldier in the face and then, 
you know, but but the, the other games were, you know, the American soldiers versus the insurgents. Right. They just didn't call them Taliban, right? Right. But what's actually more disturbing to me, oddly enough, is seeing like, you know, some kind of odd representation of a person, uh, a religious person with like full religious gear on with a gun attacking an American. That's weird to me. Yeah. That's kind of jarring. I'm like, what am I playing? I'm shooting, I'm shooting, you know, I Islamic people. That's weird to me. That is weird to me. I'm used to seeing, oddly, as odd as it is to say, I'm used to seeing American soldiers get killed in video games. Because it happens all the time in the Call of Duty series, right? Pe right? You know, you got your partners killing. When you're online, you're either the insurgents or the Americans. They're just Russian, right? So it's not as... But what's weird to me is it's like, this is some representation. I, I just saw that guy dying on there, of, of like a bearded guy wearing like, you know, full garb like it's Ramadan and you're gunning him down. That's weird to me. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I'm not used to that. These kind of games, like I've previously talked about on our show about how I am not a personal fan of really realistic shooters mm, mm. like Medal of Honor, like Call of Duty. Yeah. I can do shooters like Halo Rage. or... Or, right, because it's like they're fake characters. They're not like real people. Right, right, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. I have a real problem with like shooting representations of people that could actually exist. Totally. There, there are barriers of good taste that you just don't cross. Like if a game came out right after 9-11 that was like, ram your plane into a, a tower, or if a game ever came out like that. Obviously, we have the right to make them, but it's bad taste, you know? It's not right. good. It's just like that whole crazy controversy happening right now. I don't know if you know, where somebody's oh, threatening yeah. to burn the Quran. Like, the, the, why? I know you have yeah. the right to do that as an American citizen, but what good is that possibly going to do? Yeah. And this does seem to be crossing the line a little bit. I think it will probably, unfortunately, unfortunately for all the people who put in the time and effort and who are probably making a good game just with the wrong skins, right. you know, the wrong character models, um, it's probably not going to come out. Yeah, I, I doubt well, it's really the gonna... reboot with this, um, with the armed forces set in Afghanistan, is set to become or set to uh, be released on October twelfth. So that's a little over a month away. So we'll see. There have been games previously released like this that have been delayed or pulled altogether. Yep. Uh, Konami had one, Six Days Six in Fallujah. Six Days in Fallujah is Never a perfect happened. example. And it was so, going to be released less than a month and it was pulled. Right, from, so from when it was pulled. only time will tell. Mm -hmm. Um, only time did tell the definitive <laughs> that's my segue between uh, the the definitive winner between the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 in terms of power. IGN decided this week of all weeks, I don't know exactly why to run this story. And here's basically the conclusion they came away with. Um, they break it broke it down. you know, they went to the the, the PC the CPU, the GPU, and they broke everything down. I'm going to break it down for you so that you don't actually have to read with your eyes. But thank you, IGN. <laughs> So the PS3 has the better CPU because it's got seven single cores versus the Xbox 360's dual-threaded three cores, which is actually makes it around six cores, giving it an extra core. Um, the Xbox 360's chip is technically, theoretically faster, but it's um, the new Xbox 360 chip on the new Xbox 360 squats, whatever slim. they are. They don't call it the slim, though. It's not the, they don't call yeah, it the it slim. it is the Xbox 360 slim. That's not what it's called. Really? No. I'm pretty the sure. model has an S on it, but you will only ever see the new Xbox 360. Oh. It's just like the new Xbox 360 dashboard, right? The oh, new yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. Gotcha. I just call it the squad. If they're not going to call it the slim, the I'll call it the squad because okay. it's just shorter. <laughs> anyway, um, the new processor on that one's supposed to be technically faster than the PS3's, but they locked it down so that all the games will play the same across all platforms. Um, the Xbox 360 actually has the better GPU, barely, according to IGN. That's the graphics processor, which means that it's got higher peak performance, even though the PS3's steady performance produces better general uh, performance. The PS3 has more RAM, uh, even though Xbox 360 has, or sorry, the PS3 has better RAM, even though the Xbox 360 has twice as much RAM, because the PS3's is XDR, uh, and, the, and, the and the Xbox 360's is DDR3, which is slower. Um, the Xbox 360's is also shared with the video uh, RAM, so they, it's kind of like a shared pool, whereas the PS3 has a dedicated one, again, causing the overall performance level that the PS3 produces to be generally better for exclusive games. And we've seen that. In well, I would guess that they would need to have that for the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray would have to have a dedicated set of yeah, processors. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the PS3 also wins the hard drive because, well, there's both 5,400 RPM, RPMs. Um, the, uh, the hard drive on the PS3 is actually not proprietary. You can just buy it from anywhere and plop it in. The Xbox 360, you've got to pay like 100 bucks. From really? That I didn't Microsoft. know that about the PS3. Yeah. Yeah, because we're looking to um, uh, upgrade our uh, Do it. Xbox, and then we, have to, we had to buy that fancy cable transfer because the hard mm. drives don't fit onto the new model. I'd be curious to know if, uh, 
anybody in the chat room or anybody at home knows if you can put a solid state drive in your PS3 because that would be rocking. A solid state drive? Yeah, it's, those are the fastest hard drives you can possibly get. They have no moving parts. It's just flash. It's just a, a giant flash drive essentially, and it's really, really lightning fast and it stays cool better, and it doesn't break as easily hmm. as. Uh, Interesting. So, no. if we have any hardware yeah. techs out there, shoot us an email. Let so us know. I'll skip the rest of this stuff. We talked about the Blu ray, the advantages of Blu ray versus DVD drive, um, because we got to wrap the show up pretty soon, believe it or not. We're running yeah, out of time. Yeah, we got to get to bonus points, man. Yes, that's right. That's right. So, um, last thing I'll say is that uh, the PS3 forces most of its games to run in 1080p, whereas the Xbox 360 forces most of its games to run in 720p. So, they gave that to the PS3. And uh, that's, uh, that's I know, debatable, I know. the difference it's like between 720, 720 and 1080. It's right. minimal. I, I had mean. a guy come up to me one day, and he was like, hey, I have a projector, and it's like eight, like 80 inches, and I see the difference. Well, you're like one out of a million. You Who know what has I mean? an 80-inch projector? Yeah, and Jeez. it sits like two feet from it. Not me. There are but other things, but the PS3 took the cake, really. All right, very Overall, interesting. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. that report. Yeah. All right, we got a couple more stories that we're going to breeze through here so we can get to our bonus point segment. First up, Killzone 3 deploys February 22nd. Yes, yeah, yeah. the date has been announced. Uh, Killzone 3 was or obviously previously announced that it would be released in 2011, and now you have a date, so mark it in your calendar. February 22nd is that date. Um, Obviously, you guys may or may not remember, in last year's title, the Interplanetary Strategic Alliance took the fight to the Helgen homeworld, where they achieved a measure of success against the Nazi-esque civilization of invaders in the 2004 <laughs> original. For the third entry in the series, Amsterdam-based Guerrilla Games will be fleshing out this homeworld with more enemy types, larger and more diverse environments, and jetpacks. Woohoo! Yay! With the futuristic personal conveyance, gamers gain the ability to thrust skyward for a limited period of time. Ooh, look yeah, at that! They do. That's fun. For and affording them access to heretofore unreachable locations and opening up the possibility of aerial gunfights. Whoa! It's like a Taylor Reach or something. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> it does look awesome, though. It does look good. Yeah, no, the graphics look really cool. Yeah. So, I mean, this should be awesome. Comes out February 22nd, so. Qu that, that, that does look cool. I, I'm and PS it. bonus is going to have support for PlayStation's Move. Oh, wow. As, long, as well as stereoscopic 3D displays. So um, that's like kind of cool. Like to aim and stuff? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm not quite sure exactly how mm. it's going to work. But I think you can get like a like a rifle uh, peripheral that you can stick the move <laughs> controller in, so you can like <laughs> shoot things with the move. It'd probably be better with an actual controller than you know. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. I might be wrong actually. We'll, um, we'll see. Quick note on the last story: uh, a bunch of people, PC nerd Miguel Perez and others in the chat room, confirmed that you can put an SSD uh, solid state drive in the PlayStation 3. It doesn't give you as big of a performance increase as, as you'd think, because you know with every PS3 thing you got to install. Or a lot of games have are, have a mandatory install right. because the Blu-ray drive actually runs more slowly. It's got a more precise needle, but it runs more slowly than uh, DVD drive, so they can't yeah. run all the games off that. But right now, we are actually going to skip to the bonus point segment because we got to get to that. We missed Heck it last yeah. week; we ran out of time. So we're going to do a bonus point segment, and we have our producer Derek with us right now. Hello. Hello. Nice How's shirt. It going? Nice shirt yourself. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the turtle, yes. pa turtle power. I, I, miss, I, I miss the Teenage Mutant Ninja yes. Turtles memo. Yes. Here we go. Here yes. we go. Uh, well, we'll get you on next time. But, okay, uh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Cowabunga did. <laughs> uh, it's time for bonus points. Yes. Yeah. Are we ready? So Are we ready? ready? Right now. Okay. First question. Name one of the playable characters from Left 4 Dead 1. Josie. Frank? Yes. <laughs> Did you know that? I, well, wait, 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 wait. I just guess. Hold on, hold on. I just guess. What'd you say? Josie. No. And you said Frank. Frank. I'm gonna give it to you on a technicality. Okay. Francis. What? That's Francis. kind of like it. So. What? You said Josie, which which is I mean, nothing. I wasn't gonna nothing. Be right, but. All right, all right, all right. Question two. Question two. What does the E stand for in ESRB, the software rating score that determines an appropriate age for video games? Electronic. No. How much time do I have? Hold on, okay. The, the music's running out. Um, ESRB. Entertainment. Correct. Yes. Damn. It's pure guessing skills right there. Number three. Number three, it's one one. What 1980s video game star returned in 1994 alongside new characters Rambi the Rhino, Expresso the Ostrich, and Winky the Frog? Sonic? No, 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 I know what it is. I know what it is. In? Diddy Kong, Diddy Kong. No, no. 
Yes. Uh, we are going to yes. get it. Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo. Yes, Donkey Kong. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You got All right. It. I love right. the Rhino. Yeah. Number four. More embarrassing way to die in Mortal Kombat 2. <laughs> Babalities or friendships? Friendships. friendships. It's a tie. It's a tie. Okay. okay. Tie. We each get a point. It's definitely friendships. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. You, you've got to win this or she's okay. got it. Okay. Uh, final question. <laughs> nice. This is nice, right? Yeah. 240 Microsoft points equals how many US dollars? $3. Three. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, very nice. That means there's a tiebreaker. Oh, oh, I like this yeah. competition. That's three on three, sir. Okay. What year did Duke Nukem Forever start development? 1999. 1997. She wins! 1997? 97. Oh, yeah, duh, 13 years. <laughs> I even said that. Good day, sir. Good work. You do lose. Work. That was a you tough, do. that was tough, man. This has been a tough Very show nice. for me. Really tough. Very nice. This has been a... Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank Derek. You. Have fun. We're going to awesome. wrap up the show. Thank you, sir, High very five. much. High five. Don't leave me hanging. All right. Okay. So uh, <laughs> the websites we would like to thank for their information are the following. TheBitBag.com, Destructoid.com, Gamasutra.com, Kotaku, Joystick, Max Console, IGN, Game Trailers, G4 TV, Game Pro, and why not? Gazelle.com. Uh, <laughs> you can find me, Michael Ludden, on Twitter, at Michael underscore Ludden. Um, you can find me on... YouTube at Ludden Media, one word. Um, and you can shoot me an email at michael at thisweekend.com. And you can find me on Twitter at Andrea Renee. Plus, you can also find my YouTube channel where I have lots of cool vids. That's my gamer tag, Blossom01. That's B L S S M 01. And you can also email me at Andrea at this weekend. And be sure to email us your ideas for showdowns, for top fives, for mm -hmm. bonus points. Mm -hmm. Actually, probably not bonus points questions. You should not email that to us because then it'd be kind of like Because then we would know it. But, I mean, we want to hear from you guys. Be sure to write and subscribe to us on YouTube or on iTunes where you can watch and download our episodes. Be friends with us on Facebook. And, you know, be sure to check out some of our other great shows that we yeah, have here at thisweekend.com. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got This Week in we, this weekend Music coming up next, for example. Stay tuned for that. Um, also, you can find us on Twitter at TWIVideogames.com. What? See, TWI Video Games. That's what it is on Twitter, at TWI Video Games. Um... Thank you for watching. <laughs> That's all the time we have. It's game over. <laughs> <laughs>